I'm Zeamless, and in association with ADSR, I'm here to bring you some workflow tips for using FL Studio 12. If you like this content, feel free to subscribe to the channel because there'll definitely, definitely be more of this stuff. Anyway, today is going to be about the plugin picker and why it's cool. I actually didn't like it initially when it was brand new because I, I was very, like most people, I was very used to the ad menu, the, the channels ad, which is just called ad now. Ad channel is supposed to be channel ad. It's pretty interesting turn, turn of events. But the channel picker is a lot less clicks to use and it's much faster, which is, of course, you know, valuable when we're talking about workflow tips. The way that it works is that when you click on, I'm, I'm middle clicking right now. If you click into nothingness, you get it. And that here, there's also this button up here. And there's also a key command, which it says F8. So you can just do that, I, any of those options, and it'll work out for you. I'm personally fond of the middle click just because it's faster to just go boop, 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 and you get to get a thing. So what I did there is that I drag and drop. You click, you click on a thing, you can drag it, you take it and drop it, and then it'll show up where it's supposed to go. And other fun things include that if I drag and drop something onto a mixer insert, it'll actually put it in that mixer insert and color it and name it according to what the, what the plugin actually is. As you see here, I have third-party stuff, like Massive. How did I get Massive in the plugin picker? Well, it has to do with how the plugin database works. And there's actually some more interesting things you could do with it, but I'm just for you know the sake of doing this, I'll come in here and uh, do, this, do this again. I'm gonna delete Massive here, that's gone. Massive is no longer in the list. Now, how do we get Massive in the list? So for this to work, I have to go to uh, the installed thing and get the like, VSTs open and find Massive, because it's definitely in there. Where is it? Massive, bam, drag and drop, which you can do, of course, from this menu as well. And now here's Massive. Now, Massive's default preset, if you remember, is that one with the weird uh, envelope already assigned to something. Most people like to initiate the preset for it to, um, you know, actually just be a saw wave by default. Now, here's I'm, the reason why I'm telling you this is because when you want to add the new third, the third party plugin to the plugin picker, the way this works is you take it, you, you go to the plugin database and you, and you click on the sample or the category you want to be in. Now you can actually make your own categories. If you go to the actual folder that it's in, you can come in here and make your own categories. It'll show up and it'll be in there. So you come in here and I say, okay, I want to add plugin database as, fl as favorite, flag as favorite. And when it does it, it will take uh, essentially a snapshot of the UI and make that the thumbnail. And now whenever I open up Massive, it's that initialized preset. You can actually save it and default it to whatever default you want a uh, plugin to be, which is super important. And then of course it'll show up in the list as in, in the plugin database. And of course, if I went to the specific section, it would show up there too, which is super neat. So that's a basic introduction into the how, a little bit into how the plugin database works and how the plugin picker works and how you can get third party stuff into the plugin picker, which is of course very important. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to the ADSR channel where these videos are going to be. And uh, as usual, have a nice day.